and thank you to my subscribers if you have not already subscribed please subscribe to my channel so in the first lesson we saw how to create a AWS ALB and enable HTTPS listener and uh, so once this step is done the next step is to secure the AWS ALB using an open ID connect provider like Okta so if you have uh, seen the first video you should have already created a new AWS ALB and you should be able to access that AWS ALB using the DNS name so if I copy this DNS name and go to a different browser and type HTTPS colon slash slash that AWS ALB you will see this kind of a response so basically this response comes from the lambda function which we configured in the previous lesson which is available in that video I will share the link to that video in the details of this video and you can follow that video to configure this lambda function which is protected like which is protected by this AWS ALB so whenever someone tries to access this AWS ALB URL it will automatically invoke that lambda function and return this response and this response is nothing but uh, the headers that are posted in the request to that AWS ALB so the lambda function just reads the headers and then responds back to this uh, URL along with those header values in a JSON format. So you can see all these request headers like accept language, cookie, host, all these things. So now this particular AWS ALB URL is available in internet. So anyone can access this URL from any part of the world and without any authentication. Uh, in this video, we are going to see how to add an authentication layer to this URL using OpenID Connect protocol and Okta as the identity provider. So let's for a moment consider this URL points to your real application. It can be a website which you want to protect using Okta as the identity provider. So let's see how to do that. So in order to do that, you need an Okta account and anyone can sign up for an Okta developer account. So if you go and search for Okta developer account, you will see the link to sign up for an Okta developer account and you can sign in using your own Gmail ID and that will automatically create a developer account for you. So I already have an Okta developer account and what I'm going to do is uh, the first step is we have to create a OIDC application in Okta and that particular OIDC application will, res uh, will represent this AWS ALB URL. Uh, like I said before, like let's consider this a ALB points to a real application in the backend which is basically a website which we want to protect using Okta. So we will create an app integration in Okta using the OIDC protocol that is OpenID Connect and select the application type as web app web application click next and let's name it as OIDC ALB web app let's remove this read sign out redirect URI we don't really need it as of now let's select allow everyone in your organization to access this application and click save So this is uh, so now the Okta application is created. We still need to do certain configuration changes, which we can revisit at a later point of time. But uh, at this point of time, let's go to the next step, that is to enable the authentication layer in this AWS ALB. If you go to the Listeners tab and go to View or Edit Rules. You will see a default rule that is already available in this ALB which points to the target group. So we did this configuration in the previous lesson and uh, and uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to add an authentication layer in this rule. So let's see how to do that. If you go to edit and edit, if you go to add action you will see an authenticate option. So select the authenticate option and by default you will see Amazon Cognito but let's uh, change it to OIDC because we are going to use Okta in this case and then when you select OIDC it will ask for certain details like issuer, 
and multiple different endpoints and client ID and secret. So let's see how to get these details from Okta. So if you go to this Okta configuration for this client application, you will see a domain. So copy the domain by clicking this button. Open a new tab. Then type HTTPS colon slash slash domain. And then type slash well hyphen known slash dot well hyphen known slash open ID hyphen configuration. So in your case, the domain will be different because each developer account will have a different domain. So just use your domain which shows up in this application configuration and then append this slash dot well hyphen known slash open ID hyphen configuration and then you will get this kind of a response. So from here you can see all the values that are required to configure this OIDC provider in AWS ALB. So the first value is issuer if you go here this is the first value copy this add it here the next value is the authorization endpoint again you can copy this and the next is token endpoint so copy this token endpoint and the next is user info endpoint so copy this user info endpoint and put it here. And then the remaining two values are client ID and secret, which you can find in this uh, client configuration. So click, click, click this button. It will automatically copy the values. Then click this button. So we are done with the configuration values. Let's check the advanced settings now. So by default, ALB will only request for OpenID scope, but we want the user profile details as well as email address in the ID token. So let's actually append those two scopes. Just add a space after OpenID, then enter profile, then another space, email. Then click the stick button and then update the configuration. So now when I try to access the same AWS ALB URL, it should redirect to Okta, but throw an error. It, it will throw an error because we still need to make some config changes. But if it doesn't redirect, just wait for a minute because sometimes it will take a minute to refresh. But let's try now. Yes, it got redirected. But if you look at this, it says the redirect URI parameter must be a login redirect URI in the client app settings. So if you remember when I did the Okta configuration, I didn't make any changes. I just created a web app OIDC web application with the default settings. So the next step we need to do is configure this redirect URI. So click edit. So if you look at this redirect URI, it has a default localhost URI, which we can remove. Now let's look at uh, the redirect URI that needs to be configured. So if you search for AWS ALB OIDC, the very first link that you see is the AWS documentation. And if you go to this section, prepare to use an OIDC compliant IDP, they have clearly mentioned that one of these URLs needs to be configured in the redirect URI of the client open ID connect provider client configuration. So this CNAME URL is applicable if you have a custom domain that is configured for your ALB, but this is just a demo. So I don't have any custom name configured for my custom domain configured for my AWS ALB. I'm going to just use the default DNS URL to configure the redirect URI. So go, go back to this AWS ALB go to description copy this dns and go to the octa configuration screen and click add uri https colon slash slash the aws alb dns and then go back to this documentation copy the remaining portion of the url which is slash oauth to slash idp response append it and click save so we are done with the configuration now again, go back to the EC2 management console, copy the DNS name and come to the 
Mozilla browser and again try accessing this URL. Now we got the login page which basically confirms the configuration is looking good. Otherwise you would have seen another the Okta login page. So now let's go back to the Okta screen and uh, create a test user to test this end-to-end -end flow. So let's actually create two users. I will call it as test user one or something like OIDC test one user one OIDC test user one at example.com you can give any dummy email address anyway we are not going to verify the email address and set a password and uncheck this option set up a password that you are comfortable with save and add another so let's copy this uh, and i'm going to add another user oidc test2 user2 oidc test user2 at example.com and a password so click save so now we have two different test users let's log in using each of the users and see how the token value changes so i will first log in using the oidc test user one at example.com So the login is successful. So if you have noticed, before I added the authentication layer, all these headers were there except these X Amazon OIDC headers. So if you look at the header list, there are three additional headers that were added as part of this integration, X hyphen AMZ and hyphen OIDC, access token, data, and identity. So this basically proves the authentication layer has been enabled and the users are able to authenticate and access the application that is protected by this AWS ALB. So let's look at this token, uh, the first token which is the access token. So if you copy this token and use this website jwt.io, so you can look at this token and you will see these are all the scopes which are requested. If you remember, we configured these scopes in the AWS ALB, open ID, profile and email. Then you have the user ID of this user. So if you go back to the Okta user profile uh, and click this user one link, you won't see it in this profile page. So if you go to this profile page, it won't show the user ID. But if you look at this URL in the top, this user's user id is uh, starts with 00 ends with d7 so 00 and ends with d7 the exact same user id and then the user's username is oidc test user at example.com so now let's look at the other token which is the id token copy this uh, jwt put it here so you will look, you will see all the details, OIDC test one, user one. If you go back to the Okta screen, first name is OIDC test one, last name is user one. And similarly, the email address and all the details. And the third claim that you see, in, I won't say a claim, it's a header. The third header that you see is OIDC identity, which is basically the user's user ID, which is same as whatever you see in this URL. So now you can use this unique identifier of that user to build an authorization table where you can have the primary key as the user's unique user identifier and then certain other attributes for different users. And depending on those attributes, you can have authorization logic implemented in your Lambda function. Now let's try to log in using the other user and see what happens. So in order to do that, I, I have to first clear the cookies. If you don't clear the cookies, for example, if I keep refreshing this page, it will just continue using the previous user's session. So I need to clear the cookies and I use this plugin. If you want, you can also install that plugin. 
So now the cookies are cleared and now if I refresh, it should redirect me to Okta login page. Yeah, so I got redirected to the Okta login page and let's log in using the other user, OIDC test user 2. So the login is successful and let's quickly check one by one token. So if, if I copy this uh, access token, I should see the user ID of the second user. So if you look at the sub value, it is OIDC test user 2 at example.com and the user ID is of user ID is uh, the user 2's user ID. So if you click that user 2 profile link. If you look at this ID in the URL, it starts with 00, ends with 5D7, G5D7, right? So it exactly matches. So it starts with 00 and ends with G5D7. And if you look at the ID token, you should see the profile attributes of the first uh, of the second user that is the OIDC user 2. So if you look at these uh, values OIDC test user 2 at example.com OIDC test 2 user 2 and similarly if you look at this Amazon OIDC identity claim it exactly matches with that user ID in the URL. So this is how you add a authentication layer to an AWS ALB, it is a very nice feature. You don't have to write any code in your backend application to redirect to your identity provider, call all the token endpoints, get the tokens. AWS ALB takes care of all those functionalities and it will just forward three additional headers in the request to the backend application, which is which starts with X hyphen AMZ and hyphen OIDC. And in your application, you just need to read these tokens and if you want to implement some authorization logic for each user, then you can build an authorization table using the user's identifier, that is the user's ID as the unique identifier or the primary key in the table, and then have multiple attributes configured in the table and based on that, you can implement an authorization layer in your application which is hosted in a EC2 server or a Lambda function. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.